Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing to talk about humility being God's path to more grace. This is based on James chapter 4, 1 Peter chapter 5, where it says, God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. And so we all want the grace of God. We want His ability, but God's kingdom is set up that it flows through humility. It doesn't flow through pride. And so for over two weeks now, two and a half weeks, I've been talking against pride and for humility. I've used a bunch of scriptures and there's just no way I can go back and summarize all that. But I can say that it is really, really important. If you've missed any of this teaching, please get hold of these materials. I promise you, this is something that would change your life. And I know that most people think, oh, I don't need a lesson in humility, but I think all of us do. This is never something that you just nail, that you get it and that you walk in tro total humility the rest of your life. You know, I've taught on things like this before and I've had people come up afterwards and say, would you just please cast pride out of me, self-centeredness and all of this. The only way you can get rid of pride and self-centeredness so that it's never a factor with you again is just to die and go be with the Lord and get delivered from this flesh. As long as you are living in this life, you are going to have a self that seeks to promote itself and operate independent of God and it has to be managed. It has to be controlled. You just don't ever get to where you've arrived in this area. And so it doesn't matter whether, uh, you know, you feel like this is something that you need or not. Every one of us has this flesh and pride is Satan's inroad into our life. It's like his beachhead. It's his landing zone. It's how he gains access to us. And you have to deal with this. So this is vitally important. I really encourage you to get it. We've been talking about so many things. And on our program yesterday, I ended talking about the first characteristic of true humility as being dependence upon God. Now, again, if you were to go and, and uh, research teaching on humility and people started giving characteristics of it, they probably wouldn't even list dependency upon God. But I believe that that's really one of the foundational things. It's not just... Uh, you know, not being arrogant and thinking you're better than everybody else. True humility is just being dependent upon God. And then the second thing, this is what I want to start talking about today. At true humility is giving all of the glory to God and not seeking to take the glory for good things that happen to yourself. And I tell you, this is in rare uh, supply today. There is a, uh, a lack of of true humility in this area. So many people want to just glorify themselves and talk about what they've done. You know, I just met with a minister yesterday that I've heard about for decades. I've listened to some of his teaching and so we've crossed paths, we've known about each other, but I've uh, not really got to meet him and his wife and I sat down and had lunch with them. And one of the things that really impressed me about it, him was that he wasn't out to glorify himself. So many times when I meet with ministers, I mean, they just start giving you a list of all of the things that they've done, all of their accomplishments. And what they're trying to do is to make themselves important in your eyes and to gain your acceptance. And this guy was a humble man. And when I asked him about what he did and I asked him, do you have a television broadcast? And when I asked him things, he would answer it and stuff, but he wasn't promoting himself. He had a godly attitude. But I'm telling you, there are so many people today that they want to take credit and glory for the things that are going on. And this goes way back to some of the things that I said in the beginning of this teaching. And that is that whether you realize it or not, God is the source of everything good in your life. And there's a lot of people thinking, oh, you know, you don't understand. Man, I worked hard for all of this money that I've got. Man, I work 40, 50, 60 hours a week. I've done this, this, and this. But everything you've done, God's the one who gave you your uh, talents, your ability, your strength, your health to get it done. God is the one that's caused the freedom in this nation. Hundreds of years ago, before you and I were born, other people died and sacrificed to give us the freedom where we could do the things that we're doing. The truth is there's nobody who's a self-made man or a self-made woman. You may have put some effort into it, but God's the one who gave you the energy, the strength, the talents to be able to do it. And you've got to recognize God as your source. 
And so a truly humble person, even though you may work hard and do a lot of things, God gets all of the glory. And this is one of the distinguishing characteristics of true humility is whether or not you give the glory to God. If you are a person that is seeking the glory for yourself and you're always having to uh, promote yourself and you're always having to make sure that everybody understands how important you are and who you are, then you know what that is? That's pride. And like I was saying at the beginning of my program, you don't ever just nail this and you never have another problem with pride in your life. You know, this has been many years ago, back before I was on television, but I've been on the radio since 1976, I believe it is, either 1975 or 76. And I had broadcast in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I had been to one of these large churches. I was on this minister's television broadcast. He had, uh, I, he had interviewed me on his television program and stuff. And anyway, I was in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I went and sat in his church service, and there was thousands of people. There's probably four or 5,000 people in this auditorium. And I had been ministering on the radio there for I don't even know, but a decade or more, something like this. And during a Sunday morning service, I was looking around, and, and at this time I'd only been on radio. I'd never been on television, so people didn't know what I looked like. And I was looking around and thinking, I wonder you know, if any of these people listen to my radio broadcast. And, you know, I'm not proud of this. I'm humbling myself to tell you this, but I begin to start thinking, I wonder if these people know who I am. I wonder if this minister up there would remember me that I was on his television program. And I was just wondering, you know, is, am I significant? Does anybody recognize who I am? And I've probably ministered to them and touched their lives. And I was just sitting here operating in arrogance taking these things for my own credit. It was, it was pride is what it was. And I was sitting there thinking these thoughts. And as I was thinking them, the Lord spoke to me and he says, man, you're operating in pride. It's all about you. You know, what you ought to be thinking is about has the Lord touched these people and stuff. But I was, it was just all about do these people know who I am? And right as I was thinking these things and God was rebuking me and I was beginning to see the pride that I was operating in, at that moment that minister says, we're glad to have Andrew Womack in our congregation and he had me stand up. And this was right when God was just putting the spotlight on all of my pride and he had me stand up in front of all of these people and I guarantee you it was just like I, I felt naked like God had exposed me at the very moment he was rebuking me over this pride. And so the reason I bring this up is to say that, you know what, taking the glory and the credit for stuff is pride. Now this is not to say that you don't ever sit there and acknowledge anything good. You know what, God has used me. God has touched many people's lives through me and it's not pride for me to say that as long as I give the glory to God, as long as I say that God is the source of all of it. You know, you can see this in the life of Jesus. I used these verses on our program yesterday, but let me draw this new truth out of it about how he gives the glory to God. In John chapter 5, verse 30, he says, I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. Now, Jesus here is operating in humility. Again, Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, Jesus said, I am meek and lowly in heart. Jesus was a humble person. And how did he express that humility? He says, I am not taking the glory for myself. It is my Father who is speaking to me and telling me what to say. Now, did he sit there and say, I've never done anything good? No, because that would have been a lie. That wouldn't have been humility. Man, Jesus, everything he did was good, but he gave the glory to his Father. He's, this is specifically when people were asking him, how do you know these things? How did you learn these things? Over in John chapter 7, he says, if any man will come and do the Father's will, he will know of this doctrine. God will impart it unto you. And Jesus was giving the glory to his Father for everything that had happened through him. He didn't deny that he had done things good. It, and there's, today, there's a false impression about 
humility that people will sit there and actually downplay and discredit things that they've done and say, oh, it's really nothing. That's not humility. That's just a religious con deal. The truth is there's nothing wrong with saying that God has done good things through you and that God has given you talents and abilities. There's nothing wrong with you acknowledging the good things that are in you. It just comes down to are you giving God the glory? Are you recognizing Him as the source? You know, we are in the process of building buildings and doing things, and God is doing awesome things, changing people's lives. And people, when they come up to our Karis Bible College, they are very touched and very impressed. And they say things to me about, wow, all of this. And you know what? It would be wrong on my part if I'd say, oh, this is nothing. It is some. I mean, it's a big deal. God is doing a great miracle in our midst. We are seeing great things happen. And it would be pride on my part for me to sit there and not glorify God and not give God the glory and not talk about all of the wonderful things that God's doing. See, pride, it, it could be pride on either extreme. Either you can sit there and get to taking the credit and saying, look at who I am and look at what I've done. That's pride. But it could also be pride for you to sit there and downplay what God has done and not give Him the glory. Jesus didn't downplay what God had done through him. He didn't deny that the dead had been raised, that the blind eyes had been opened. He didn't deny any of this, but every time somebody came to him and says, where do you get this power and authority? He didn't take the glory for himself. He constantly gave the glory to God. Right here, he says, my judgment is just. Did you know, again, there is a religious concept about humility that somebody would never sit there and make a proclamation like my judgment is just, my thoughts are right, what I'm doing is correct. They'd think, oh, that's arrogance. No, it's just humility. He says, my judgment is just, and here's the reason, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. You know, there's a number of scriptures in the Word that talks about a faithful messenger is a person who will be uh, uh, true to the person that sent him. A faithful messenger is a person who's not out to glorify themselves, but they will represent the person that sent them appropriately. An unfaithful messenger is a person who will sit there and seek the glory for themselves. And if what they were going to say, if the message that they were given and that they were supposed to deliver might cause them personal injury or it might cause them embarrassment or it might be criticized. And so therefore they would modify the message. They would change it. You know what? That's not a faithful messenger. And it all comes back to that they just don't want to be criticized. They want the glory for themselves. They want everybody to love them and accept them. You know, this is what's happening to ministers. I think I use these examples during this same series, but uh, I saw a Barna survey that said that 90-something percent of all ministers believe that the Word of God addresses every social ill, every social moral problem that we have in our nation today, that 90-something percent of the ministers said that they believe the Word addresses that. And yet, the next question was, so have you ever preached on these things? And it was only 10% that had taught on these things that the Word said. They knew that the Word said it, but they wouldn't teach on it because they were fearful that it might cost them members of their church, it might cost them offerings, it might cost whatever. You know, most people may not phrase it this way, but you know what that is? That's pride. They are seeking the glory for themselves. They want everybody to love them. They are not a faithful messenger. This is God's Word. This is what we're supposed to be preaching. This is what we are supposed to be proclaiming. And there's a lot of preachers that will not speak what the Word of God says because it might cost them either in attendance, in finances. Uh, they might be criticized. They might have blogs written about them. And you know what? That is just pride that they do not want to suffer that criticism. They want all of this glory, all this credit to come to themselves. What that is is pride. That's an unfaithful messenger. Man, I tell you, that is quite an indictment, but that is exactly what's happening today. There are so many people that are just quiet. And not only ministers, but people at your workplace. There's people that will not stand up and speak the Word because you don't want to be criticized. You don't want to be known among your co-workers as the religious fanatic. Oh, here's that person that believes the Bible. You know, I heard some statement. This was among political 
uh, candidates that are running for president. And anyway, there was some statement about a person speaking in tongues and being a Pentecostal. And I mean, they just mock this and stuff. You know, if I was running for public office to be a truly humble person, I would have to just be bold and proclaim that, yes, this is something that I've received. This is something that God's done in my life. I would embrace it. I'd speak of it. I wouldn't be afraid of it. You know what that is? That's humility. And a person that would sit there and hide something that God has given them and wouldn't stand up and speak and be bold about it. You could phrase it different ways, but the bottom line is that's just pride. You aren't dependent upon God. You are wanting people's opinion of you to be good, and so you won't say anything that might put you in a bad light that might not be accepted and promoted by everybody. What that is is pride. A truly humble person is a person that is dependent upon God, isn't seeking the glory for themselves, doesn't care about people's opinion. They aren't running for a personality contest. They aren't trying to win public approval. They're just a faithful messenger. You know, I've gone overseas and ministered, and when I, I'm speaking in a culture that has a different language, the interpreter has to take what I'm saying and speak it in that language so that it can convey those messages to the people. I was in Germany one time, and I was speaking through an interpreter. And I, you know, I don't know how to describe this, but when I'm ministering, I can tell if I'm connecting with the people or not. I don't know how to, I do that. I guess it's the Holy Spirit, a gift of the whole. I don't know how it is, but I can tell when I'm connecting with people and when I'm not. And even though all the people were looking at me and it seemed like I had the people's attention, I could just tell that I was not connecting with these people. They weren't getting it. And I was frustrated. And after the first session, I actually went and talked to the pastor and said, what's going on? It just isn't working. And he told me, he says, my interpreter doesn't agree with you. And my interpreter was changing what I'm saying uh, because they didn't think it was good. They didn't like what I was saying. So they were changing it. They weren't actually representing it. You know, you could phrase that in a lot of different ways, but in that instance, that's pride. That interpreter was more concerned about what people were going to think about him, and yet he shouldn't have even considered what people were thinking about him. He wasn't interpreting for himself. He was interpreting for me. If people didn't like what I was saying, and even though he translated it, none of the criticism would have gone to him. It would have gone to me. And yet he was changing things because he didn't believe in some of the things that I was saying. Did you know, in a sense, a minister is an interpreter for the Lord. Here's what God is saying. And then by the Holy Spirit, God will lead us to specific things. And we are supposed to be speaking God's Word. And if people don't like us, it shouldn't affect us. If you were truly humble, you would just be a faithful messenger. You wouldn't seek to glorify yourself. You wouldn't worry about what people think about you. You would just say what God says, let the chips fall where they may. And if people don't like it, you know, God's the one who told you to say it. But man, there's a lot of people that wouldn't do that. Going back to this survey I was talking about, 90 something percent believed what the Word of God said about moral issues and only 10 percent will preach it because they are out to glorify themselves. They are not a faithful witness. Boy, that is a huge indictment. And that's one of the reasons that our nation, our society is in the problems it's in today is because the ministers haven't been faithful ministers. They've been ministering for their own advantage instead of accurately representing and interpreting for the Lord. I'm telling you, that's wrong. And again, it's not limited to ministers, but it's the same with all of us in our workplace, in our, with our relatives, among our neighbors and things like this. There are Christians that will not stand up and speak the truth and be the salt and the light that God commanded us to be because they are afraid of people's rejection and criticism. They are not faithful ministers. They aren't accurately interpreting and representing the Lord. And it all goes back to this thing of pride. They are out to get acceptance and glory for themselves. And yet a true minister, a true humble person, whether you're a full-time minister or just a Christian in the workplace, among your family, among your neighbors, a true Christian is a person who's going to sit here and accurately represent God. And it doesn't matter if it works to your benefit or to your detriment, if people reject you over it, if they praise you over it. 
It doesn't matter. A truly humble person will sit there and glorify God. This is what Jesus was saying, that He was a faithful witness. You know why? Because He was not out to glorify Himself. Boy, that's rare today. That is rare. And you know, my peers are ministers, and there are some great ministers. There are some very, very godly ministers out there. There are some people doing great things, but there's a lot of ministers that I guarantee you are completely contrary to everything I'm saying right here. And they may know the truth. They may have a relationship with God, but they're timid. They're shy. They won't speak the truth because they're afraid of people's criticism. That is not a faithful minister. That is a person who is seeking the glory for themselves. That is a proud person that is more concerned about their reputation than they are about God's reputation. I'm telling you, we need to humble ourselves. I believe I'm speaking to some ministers today who you need to humble yourself. You need to stand up and speak the truth. You know, I can think specifically about a time that I ministered on finances in a church and I mean, it just caused a revival in that church. And on the following Sunday after I was gone, the minister got up in front of the church and he got on his knees and he apologized. And he said, I knew these things that Andrew taught, but I wouldn't say them because I was afraid of people criticizing me and thinking that I was preaching on finances so that I could get you to give more and all of this, and this man just humbled himself. And he began to give the glory to God. And he says, I was wrong. I didn't tell you the truths that he knew and that he personally operated in, but he wouldn't preach it because of the possible criticism over prosperity that could come his way. And he humbled himself, got on his knees in front of his church, and the people in that church ran forward and started hugging him and throwing money on the stage, and they paid off the entire church indebtedness during that one service. I mean, it was a significant amount. And you know what? That was an example. Most people wouldn't look at that as being pride to sit there and know something and not say it because you're afraid of the criticism, but that really what it amounts to is you are seeking glory for yourself. You are wanting acceptance for yourself. You will not glorify the Lord, your, your um, boss, who is telling you what to say, and instead you're going to promote yourself. True humility just doesn't seek their own glory. They are out to glorify the one that sent them, and they are going to say what God tells them to say. They're going to do what God tells them to do. They aren't going to be ashamed of the gifts that God gives them. That is true humility. And if you have been touched through this today, I'm asking you to just humble yourself and begin to start being a faithful witness for the Lord. I tell you, not only will it change your life, it'll change somebody else's life if you truly start speaking these things in love. 